Welcome back to the course on audio signal processing for music applications. In this uh, second week of classes, we are talking about the discrete Fourier transform. And in this uh, demo, in this uh, lecture demo, I want to put that in practice by analyzing a sound. In particular, I want to analyze the sound of a tuning fork. Okay, a tuning fork produces a very clear tone. This is why it's used to tune other instruments and it produces a very clear frequency. So let's try that, let's analyze it. So we will open um, Audacity and we will uh, hit the record button and with uh, the microphone we will record the tuning fork. Okay, that should suffice. Uh, here now let's delete the parts of the recording that are not the tuning fork. Um, and let's hear it again. Yes, that's uh, the tuning fork. Uh, maybe let's uh, select the loudest part. Okay, and let's uh, zoom in. Okay, to check uh, if, uh, if it's really like a sinusoid, we can zoom in uh, to the end. And yes, it looks like a, a quite nice sinusoidal looking uh, function. Um, when we presented Audacity, we mentioned that uh, we can uh, visualize the spectrogram, which the spectrogram is basically a time varying uh, DFT. So this is the time varying DFT of that, uh, that sound I recorded of the tuning fork. And clearly it shows a very strong line uh, around, uh, in the, around 500 hertz, which is uh, basically the frequency we are uh, hearing. Um, in fact, this tuning fork if, uh, if we look at the device, it says that it's, uh, it produces 440 hertz. So this must be the 440 hertz uh, frequency. However, we also see other horizontal lines, which means that there's also other components that are present in this uh, sound. So in order to analyze it a little bit more uh, deeply, let's uh, save the file. Maybe before that, let's uh, uh, clean it a little bit more and let's make a, 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 a fade-in at the very beginning and a fade-in at the very end. That always helps to be uh, heard and to be uh, analyzed by other uh, programs. And now let's export it. This is a sound that is, uh, was recorded at 44,100 and it's a monophile. So this will create a .wav file and we will uh, save it under tuning fork name. Okay, Let's, there was one there. Okay, and now we can go to the SMS tools uh, through the terminal and uh, it's in uh, the software directory models interface and if we type python models gy we will start the interface that uh, includes all the models we will be using and the first one is the dft so let's uh, go get the sound that uh, we recorded in the home directory and it was the tuning fork Okay, and now let's hear it. Okay, uh, now let's, uh, with the default parameters, let's analyze it. Yeah, that's clearly the, a fragment of uh, the input sound. This is the DFT of uh, that sound, the magnitude and phase uh, spectra. And then we do the inverse DFT and we get uh, this shape that is also very much, apart from a smoothing window that we have applied, it's very much like the original sound. 
And here clearly we see a peak in the magnitude spectrum, and if we put the, uh, the, the cursor, uh, it shows that it's around 440 hertz. Okay. But also we see other components, softer, but that they are also present. Maybe to check how a real sinusoid uh, is analyzed and how it uh, looks like in the, in the DFT, in the spectrum, let's uh, open up a sine wave that has been synthesized. So in here, in this directory, uh, I have a sine wave at 440 Hz. Okay. Okay, that's a, a sine wave at 440 hertz. It clearly sounds very similar to the tuning fork. And uh, now let's uh, compute it. Yes, uh, it's similar shape, but if we compared, in fact, the two spectrograms, they look a little bit different. Uh, the, the one of the tuning fork looks clearly more noisy than the one of the, the electronic sinusoid. Still, the electronic sinusoid doesn't look ideal, but it clearly looks with a very clear peak, and the rest looks much softer than in the diapason the in the tuning fork. Okay, so with that, we can analyze sounds, and of course, we can change the, the size that we analyze. So, for example, if we, instead of 111 samples, we take 1001 samples and we compute it. Now we are taking a bigger chunk to be analyzed, but basically the spectrum looks a little bit different because of course we have more samples, but the general shape is the same. And we can play around with the parameters to uh, visualize uh, different uh, parameters. For example, we can just instead of starting at 0.2 seconds, we can uh, start at uh, second uh, 0.5, so a little bit forward in the sound, and the sound looks uh, very much the same, because of course it's a pure sine wave, and it's always uh, the same uh, sound. And that's all I wanted to say. Um, basically, uh, we have uh, used Audacity to analyze uh, the sound of a tuning fork, uh, and then we have saved the file and used the, the interface uh, available on the SMS tools uh, package that uh, we have developed to uh, analyze the DFT and compare um, the result of the DFT of this uh, tuning fork with the one of a pure uh, electronic sine wave. Okay, this uh, sine wave. Uh, it's in free sound, so you can uh, you can get it there. And that's all uh, for this class. Uh, hopefully, this has given you uh, a practical view of what uh, the DFT can do with real sounds, and also uh, try to understand what a sinusoid is. Uh, and that's all. I hope to see you next class. Bye bye.